Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Karen Goff from the North Dakota State Water Commission. Today we're going to talk about lowhead dams. Karen, tell me what is a lowhead dam? Well, a lowhead dam is just a simple structure built across the river channel. Um, it raises the water level in the channel behind it, but the water can still just flow freely over it. And for that reason, they're often called run-of-the-river dams. Why do we have lowhead dams? Well, a lot of these um, are pretty old structures. Um, some of them date back to the early 1900s, um, a few of them even the late 1800s. Some of them are more recent, but a lot of them were built for water supply, um, either for municipalities or for irrigation, uh, some of them for recreation use or even just for livestock use. What rivers in the state have these lowhead dams? Well, they're really all over the state. Um, you can find them you know, on some of the major rivers like the Cheyenne River, the James River, um, the Suras River, or smaller rivers like the Cannonball or Painted Woods Creek. They're pretty well scattered all over the state. Okay, are they still functioning as they were, were originally intended to? Some of them are. Um, there's a few that still have like water intakes associated with them, uh, but a lot of them are, a lot of them, the original uses are, you know, they've outlived those uses and they've just become more part of the landscape. The Water Commission is spreading Dam Safety Day on May 31st. What are some of the safety factors? Nationwide, there's an effort to try and raise awareness particularly to low head dams and the safety issues associated with them. Um, nationwide, there have been hundreds of drownings at low head dams, and that number increases every year. And right here in North Dakota, there have been multiple drownings over the years at low head dams. And what happens at these dams, the water flowing over the dam um, creates um, like a roller effect below the dam, just a strong recirculating current where if a boat goes over the dam or somebody um, you know, gets too close below the dam, they get trapped in that and it, that current just pushes them under and pulls them back to the dam um, over and over, kind of like a washing machine and they can't get out of that. And there's so much air in the water because it's so turbulent that there's less buoyancy and even life jackets aren't as effective. And so these dams have earned the reputation of being drowning machines. And so people often aren't aware of the dangers or maybe they underestimate them. And so we just want to raise awareness of that issue. Sure, and that kind of leads us into the next question. You also have a new program that provides danger signs for posting at Lowhead Dams. Right, the Water Commission has um, made available these safety signs. Um, owners of the Lowhead Dams can get two signs per dam for free. Um, installation is their responsibility, um, but they can get those by contacting the Water Commission, um, our Planning and Education Division, and they'll set them up with those signs. Okay, um, when a low head dam is no longer needed, what can be done? Well, we would encourage the owners of those dams to think about whether, whether they're still serving a useful purpose. And if they're not, um, removing the dam is one option that the owner could consider. Um, if that's not an option, um, if they're still using it or if they desire to keep it for one reason or another. Um, another option is to modify the dam. And one way that they can do that uh, to eliminate the safety concern is to, um, they go in and place um, rock riprap, um, basically rock rapids below the dam. And that just eliminates the water dropping over the dam so that roller effect can't form below the dam. Sure. Whose responsibility is it to modify or removing these dams? That's the responsibility of the dam owner. 
Many of these dams on the Red River in the last 20 years have been removed or modified. Has that effort been successful? Absolutely. Um, those that have been modified, they put the rock rapids in below the dam, and that's very successful in eliminating that safety concern. How many of these low head dams still remain that could potentially be removed? Well, there's at least 40 of them out there that we know of um, that have not yet been modified. Um, now, whether they should be removed or could be removed, that's, you know, that's up to the dam owners um, and it's a local decision. Um, we would certainly encourage the owners to, to think about that option and if not removal, to think about modifying them um, for, for, for the safety. Okay, what's the Water Commission's role in regulating or managing these low head dams that remain? Well, we try to maintain an inventory of the ones that are out there just so we know what's in existence out there. And for some of them, there may be permitting considerations depending on how much water is stored behind them. Um, but really, it's the dam owners ultimately that's responsible for them. Does the Water Commission have any programs available for removal or modifying of these dams? Well, in some cases, um, removal or modification may be eligible for cost share assistance through the State Water Commission, um, but they would need to contact the Water Commission um, and discuss the details of any particular project that they might be proposing. Okay, do lowhead dams have any impacts on fish moving up and down the rivers? Well, they do. I mean, they're a barrier across the river, basically a concrete wall across the river. So, so they do affect the fish passage. And, but modifying them, one benefit of that, putting the rock rapids in there helps the fish passage as well as eliminating the safety concerns. Okay, does Game and Fish have any role or, or oversight on these lowhead dams? Well, they certainly do have a role in partnering on public awareness activities such as this and then also in partnering on removal efforts or in modifying them for both recreation benefits and the fish passage benefits. A lot of good information, Karen. Thank you. For more information about Lowhead Dams, go to the North Dakota State Water Commission's website at swc.nd.gov. For Karen Goff from the North Dakota State Water Commission and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.